Hey, literally the kingdom in which George Orwell was born, and the land where literally John Wesley was born, the Methodist Church UK has published to its members a new language guide scolding even the church's use of brother and sister terminology. UK Methodists, originally derided for, quote, the methodical way in which they carried out their Christian faith, three centuries later exist as a hollowed-out vessel echoing globalist talking points. Now, Professor Stephen Hicks understands the postmodern use of language, and I've got two or three quick quotes from him to help us understand it. Quote, for the postmodernist, interpretation and investigation never terminate with reality. Language connects only with more language. To most postmodernists, language is primarily a weapon. Here's another quote. The regular deployments of ad hominem, the setting up of straw men, and the regular attempts to silence opposing voices are all logical consequences of the postmodern epistemology of language. Truth or falsity is not the issue. What matters primarily is the language's effectiveness." Unquote. So in other words, language is turned inside out. It's used to invert order, to undermine legitimacy, and to destroy and replace reality. It is employed to deconstruct God's created order. Now, according to the Inclusive Language Guide, quote, terminology such as husband and wife may sound inoffensive, but it makes assumptions about a family, unquote. So husband and wife is disapproved because it assumes that, generally speaking, families are structured around a, a husband and a wife, you know, a, a biological male and a biological female. The longstanding biblical worldview of what a family is contradicts the now preferred view that family is just another label to be emptied and filled with whatever elites wish it to mean now. Concern about overpopulation has led to the replacement of actual families with sterile groupings. You know, same-sex couplings, uh, couples with neutered pets in the place of children, or couples, you know, double dinks, double income, no kids combinations. All those combinations don't really add to the human population. Now, it's like 11 degrees outside right now as I'm filming this, but if you, on a warmer day, watch, look at couples walking around in the park, watch, take a look. You'll find a lot of couples, a man and a woman, and instead of with being with children, they're walking a dog. And you know, the elites have been at work at this for decades. They're very concerned about the population of the planet. And surprise, surprise, replacement numbers have spiraled down all across the Western world. The family language itself is viewed as problematic in this language guide. The UK Methodist Church warns that, quote, language such as brothers and sisters, while tending to be inclusive and friendly, doesn't take into account our non-binary friends. You might consider using siblings, friends, or children of God instead, unquote. So don't even use that phrase in the church, brother and sister. That's uh, got to go away now. It's only been 2,000 years that we've used that, but now it's got to go away because we might... We might make some uh, non-binary person unhappy. See, the rewriting of our civilization demands that new definitions of marriage and family be accepted. Try this on for size. Quote, if Gary refers to Mike as his husband, do so in general conversation and, if relevant, when writing to or about him, unquote. See, even when they write to or about persons practicing same-sex sin, Church leaders are instructing their members to refer to same-sex partners as husbands. So the Methodist church members pay their own church administrators and leaders to re-educate and to propagandize them. And this is beyond any merely neutral position. See, here's another one. Members are to, quote, attempt to speak or write in a way that is not simply not racist, but is actively anti-racist, unquote. See, this is the activist turn. This is language deployed politically to speed social change. As the Chinese Cultural Revolution of the 1960s and 70s replaced the four old, you know, old ideas, old culture, old customs, old habits, with Mao's latest constellation of ideas, so today an attempted cultural revolution is hollowing out the language right now, right now around us. George Orwell, describing the pervasive surveillance state in his dystopian novel 1984, has Winston Smith writing this, quote, nothing was your own except the few cubic centimeters inside your skull, unquote. But today, the World Economic Forum plans to do better than that because their stated vision for 2030 is that you'll own nothing and be happy. Yeah, not even those two centimeters between your ears uh, will not be. They, they're going to occupy that with their ideas and their words if it cannot all be done. In George Orwell's 1984, there's a character, he's a friend of Winston Smith before he's taken out and disappeared. His name is Sim. 
Sim works in the department that deals with language, so listen to this as he describes Newspeak to Winston. The whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought. Every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word with its meaning rigidly defined and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. It's merely a question of self-discipline, reality control. But in the end, there won't be any need even for that. The revolution will be complete when the language is perfect." Unquote. Now, boy, that really summarizes it right there, because, you know, what I'm holding in my hands here is, is, is the revolution. It's a piece of the revolution. The revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. Hey, let's get all these people and get them to, to say the right language and use the things that we, we demand that they say. Friends, there's in the Bible, the book of James in the New Testament, he warns us that friendship with the world is hostility toward God, James chapter 4, verse 4. And in 1 John 2, verse 15 to 17, we're told that if we have in ourselves the love of the world, that the love of God is not in us. See, so opposite are these two loves that Christians should not become a willing participant in overthrowing God's created order, replacing God's things with human things. But that is the fruit of friendship with the world. So while their guide on the first page and the last more or less lauds, well, it lauds the courage and bravery, uh, to use their language, necessary to echo the globalist corporate talking points, they enlist their own members to termite the culture. Now, while it may be too late for the UK Methodist Church, their fate can be a help to the rest of us. If there's one take-home point to get across, it is that some groups are using language not as a social glue, but as a corrosive weapon. So rapidly is change occurring that on the last page, they say they plan to update this guide every six months. Manipulation is not limited to language. You can also go over there, and I'll put a link to it here. Uh, they have the UK Methodist. They publish also what they call the Inclusive Image Guide. And as you might imagine, it's like this. They encourage the placement of, quote, other diverse images alongside any image that is, they say, Western. <laughs> but you don't have to be discouraged. Rather, just be glad that you can see. False doctrines are dangerous, but no less dangerous is the very weaponization of language for social deconstruction. May God bless us and help us not to fall into this fool's trap, echoing mouths, just echoing what the self-appointed elites want us to think and do, and even regimenting our private writing so that we use unbiblical language. God help us. Hey, I'm Larry Kirkpatrick for Horizon Watch. Subscribe to this newsletter. About every six weeks we come out with one. Uh, we have these short presentations like this, uh, bringing to light certain things that are happening all around us so we don't have to just be uh, surprised and, and fooled and and lose our way, let's get awake and alert. And some of people who are obsessed with many things that are choking out the interest in God, these are ways we can sort of get people thinking again and bring them back, bring them back to the Word of God and God's prophecies and God foretelling what's going to happen before it happens so we can be ready for Jesus to come. Make sure you sign up.